yesterday we told you about the shoot to kill order. Well, that order issued by Mombasa County Commissioner as a way of dealing with those who attacked the church in Likoni on Sunday has been met with anger in some quarters. A section of the civil society and security analysts say that the order will do little to solve the bigger problem. Asha Mwilu tells us more. As they widened their search for terror suspects across the country, police announced their most controversial strategy yet. And it's no surprise the shoot to kill order has been met with much criticism. He is giving authority to the police to be the investigators, the judges, and the executioners. That is not the country that uh, Kenyans determined in 2010 when they passed the Constitution of Kenya. But just how effective will this strategy be, especially at a time when security threats have evolved? You kill the messenger and you spare the, the master who can plan a similar killings in future. The worst thing for the security apparatus is when the citizenry begins to doubt you. You could be doing a good job, but as long as everybody on the street is saying, I know, then you have a problem. Because whatever you do, then guys don't appreciate it, number one, and they rubbish it, number two. It is the responsibility of the government to study, not kill. Shoot to kill is not a solution. How many people will you kill? Okay? And the more you kill, people will come. Because it's an ideology believing that when I am killed, I will go to paradise. I think whitewashing everybody by saying they're all in the same boat Everybody, uh, perhaps, that comes from outside might preach radicalism is may not be the right answer. It's not the first time police are taking this hard stance on security. The Inspector General of Police gave a similar order last year, right before terrorists attacked the Westgate Mall in Nairobi, killing more than 67 people. We have to deal with them very firmly, and this is what I'm urging and instructing all the officers in the country to use their firearms effectively the way they have been empowered by law. In 2005, when the cultural religious sect Mungiki had gotten out of hand, the then internal security minister, John Mishoki, issued the directive. People in the hands of a criminal has no other purpose except to kill an innocent person. It is therefore justifiable for the law enforcers to take equal measures against such a person. A special force within the police service was tasked with dealing with Mungiki. They gunned down dozens of men connected to the sect, and after a while, the group went underground. Police appear to be employing a similar tactic in dealing with today's security threats. Last Friday, to Riswaga Tano. Around Sunday, Wawiri, to Meokoa Bunduki. Kuna Wawiri wa Mebaki hapa. Munguki, they don't have an agenda beyond Kenya. These people, they are victim of the historical injustices. But this one, they have an agenda beyond Kenya. They have a global agenda. So it needs a political solution rather than the, what they call a military solution. Let's engage directly. Take communities, bring them together, especially their leaders, and find out what those issues are that are underscoring it. These sort of things don't happen without somebody nurturing the environment for malcontents to take place, for uh, issues like that are generated by malcontents to take place. Who's nurturing them? Why would they nurture them? Even though the Mombasa County Commissioner has given officers on the ground the go-ahead to gun down terror suspects, experts warn that police may have to rethink this strategy. Ashamwilu, KTN, Nairobi.